Good evening, guys, and welcome back to the classroom. This evening, we're going to talk about drawing with intention, which is what AutoCAD is all about. Because if you wanted to draw without values, you can just use Sketchbook or some other uh, variation of it. But we're here in CAD because we want to draw uh, objects that will be translated into real life eventually. So we have the 12 minutes here and we're going into the classroom and talking about how AutoCAD works when using values because we want to do that. So I'm gonna start this timer and then let's go. So right here you can see that we have the origin i've centered it here and this denotes zero x and zero y in this infinite plane because this plane goes uh, to infinity at both sides so we're gonna try out uh creating a line that is 300 units long um, units in AutoCAD is the basic measurement value now you don't really have to do conversions or anything at the onset you just need to be really consistent all throughout your drawing like if you're drawing in inches you must identify all your measurements in inches and so on and so forth here we're more here in the Philippines. We're more geared towards the metric system, and so we often use meters or millimeters in our drawings. So, if we wanted to create a line that is 300 units in length, you command L, select somewhere, and then identify 300, and the line goes up to wherever it was pointed at 300 units so we'll do it once again here the other side 200 this time and then 100 here so if we look at them these lines exactly 300 units in length this one is 200 and this one is 100. Now, what are the other alternative means of um, landing a line somewhere? We can use this coordinate system here. It's much harder to do, but it's. We can use that. So, for example, we identify the starting point here and we want it to be at 5 units x and 5 units y we can say 5 comma 5 denoting x and y values and the line goes to that position within the infinite plane this will be useful when you're trying to create specific lot plots or something like that Okay, now to further enhance drawing with intention here, we have these toggles. So we have the orthographic toggle which locks the movement to the left and right. So I turn that on by clicking on it. So when you try to execute a command, wow, it doesn't matter where you move your mouse, it goes only to x or to y depending on where the bias is the computer determines this you you do too so relative to the position of your first point it you tell the computer where it's gonna go and we're not locked only to orthographic right next to it is a polar lock which stops which is supposed to stop the 
line for moving depending on preset uh, values which have not yet been set here so let's go over to that you can right click on it and then identify uh, values which uh, the polar tracking will stop at for example here we have multiples like if we say let's use these multiples of 15 so with that on you can see that the polar track stops and snaps to this green line here which is exactly 15 degrees then 30 45 and so on and so forth so it does that every 15 degrees and you can change that anytime orthographic does not have as much control but i personally i more often use uh, ortho instead of polar and you can trigger these using the keyboard uh, we don't have it here on top of our keyboard but we do have the function keys so if you press f8 it turns into ortho and if you press f10 it turns into polar only one of these two can be active at any time so for example we turned on orthographic and then again commanded 300 units to the line it will stop for us and create a 300 unit line that is perfectly aligned with the x-axis and then if we go up and say 300 again there you go now if you try to draw a rectangle there you can be sure that this rectangle is 300 units by 300 units if the snapping toggle doesn't appear for you uh, that's the what do you call this that's the square that appears let me do that again when i try to do a rectangle you can see that along with the cursor there are guides like here we have a like a figure eight two triangles here we have a square and in the middle we have a triangle these are called snaps and these can be controlled also because you don't want all the snaps to be on at once because there is a snap called nearest it is this one the hourglass looking thing and then uh, the how big it looks is also dependent on your setting you can set that in the preferences eventually we'll go through that but if you wanted to edit it whatever snaps are going to be visible to you you can just command or snap or snap and then we see this window here and you can see that snapping is uh it has a hotkey also of f3 and right now we have turned on endpoint with point center node quadrant intersection extension and nearest so if we click this off when we try to do something there's no longer a nearest uh symbol along with our cursor now what what do these mean whenever you're drawing and you see this if os snap is on object snap is on and it appears for you when you drop your command it will go into that position there whenever it's indicated even if you're not directly on it like what we are right now if we use the left mouse button see the line becomes the line is suddenly generated from that position there it works also with terminating a line for example if we want to terminate it here at the end 
you just need to wait for the snap to be visible and when you click it the line automatically moves to it now this is important because you since this is an infinite plane you can get really close but if your snaps aren't on you most likely will not hit the endpoint or midpoint or whatever has been identified um so if you don't believe that let's prove it so we're gonna turn off snaps right now here this is the snap uh, toggle we can turn that off or press f3 it's the same and when we try to let's go ahead and try to hit this the peak of this mountain like thing here using a polyline that starts here if you try to eyeball it okay does that look proper to you it's pretty decent decent but i'm 100 percent sure that it's not gonna be aligned and we want it to always be aligned this is a recurring problem for uh, many users if they suddenly turn off all snap and then uh, not trigger it back again you're gonna have problems with the drawing so we don't want that we want a completely snap together drawing so what does this allow when you're doing something like this you can be sure that your drawing will be always hitting the tangents and the endpoints with absolute precision. And you'd want that because you don't want overlapping lines here. It will just make your job a lot harder. So I think for a basic set of commands uh toggles that's pretty sufficient and so we've been able to talk about how to draw with intention here i think this is just the first part because we haven't tackled uh some other methods of input here yeah uh, so that's what you want to remember uh, with this lesson uh, some toggles like osnap ortho and polar and then creating lines that are in actual units that we will eventually make into what we really want them to be like it's a 300 millimeter thing or so can be anything all right um that's it for now i will see you guys again tomorrow later